elbows. That's a tornado on the ground. Taylor Holt will be joining us shortly live in Edwardsville and we continue to follow breaking news emergency situations on both sides of the river this morning after storms blasted through the metro region and really the entire Midwest several homes damaged in defiance in St. Charles County while in Edwardsville major damage and now fatalities when a massive Amazon warehouse partially collapsed. And we're going to start there this morning in Edwardsville. All night long, emergency crews have been at the site of the Amazon warehouse collapse. This is just north, excuse me, off of 255, north of 270. And we have team coverage on the scene. News Force Taylor Holt and Jen Ray, who has been on site since shortly after the storm hit around 8 o'clock last night. Let's first go to Jenna with the very latest information. Jenna. Corey, right now it's been hours since law enforcement agencies from across the entire metro region have been out here in Edwardsville at the Amazon warehouse digging through the enormous pile of rubble left behind here from this severe event. In just the last hour, we have now learned that several people were killed by this weather event that happened around 8.30 Friday night. For now, crews, again, still out here. It's been hours. They're still just trying to comprehend what happened and try and still rescue people who may be stuck under the rubble. Now, let me show you this video first. This is an aerial view of the Amazon warehouse that you're seeing right now. It truly shows the extent of this damage. Seeing it from this view just gives you a completely different perspective of just how strong these storms were tonight. Now, you're seeing ground video of the warehouse. You can see wires dangling, debris everywhere, steel beams toppled over. Our meteorologist team believes a possible tornado or strong straight line winds hit the facility again. This all came through around 8.30 Friday night. Edwardsville Police Chief Mike Philback says they were called to respond again just around 8.30, dozens of agencies from across the entire region responded. Our fire and our police, they, they practice this um, for when these things happen. And, and even at that, uh, it still takes a, a lot of effort. I'm sure as you guys can contest the batteries uh, going down and, and uh, phone lines being you know tied up and that. So there's, there's a lot of effort that goes into it. You guys can see that there are still dozens of emergency crews on scene, fire trucks, ambulances, first responders. We have special crews here that are made for search and rescue events like you're seeing on your screen right now, both from St. Clair County as well as Madison County. They went in with hard hats harnesses, carabiners. We had shots of them earlier sifting through debris and really trying to rescue some of these people who are still stuck underneath. Now, again, we do have team coverage today. We have learned that there is a press conference in less than an hour. News Force Taylor Holt is there now, and she's going to bring you the latest of what to expect in that press conference from law enforcement. 
Yeah, that's right, Jenna. I'm currently here at the Edwardsville Public Safety Building where on Main Street, we're in about 45 minutes, as you said. They are expected to have a press conference here detailing this now fatal situation. We've actually already started to see emergency crews make their way into the parking lot here. Again, we know this is a fatal situation, confirmed fatalities in this. Right now, we don't know how many there are or how many injuries there are, but that is something that we are expecting to learn more about at this upcoming press conference. We also don't know how many people were working at the facility at the time, but we did have crews overnight, Jenna was one of them, um, who were able to see as family members lined the outskirts of the facility waiting to get an update on the condition of their loved ones. First of all, so glad you are safe and we want to thank you for joining us today. Can you talk to us about really just start to finish. What did you guys experience last night? Well, like I said, our owner called before they ever had the sirens go off and told to start putting them in the safe place, which we did, got them all in their safe place, got them all ready. And like I said, I had one door I could go to and look. When I saw that wind, I knew then, I said, cover you, cover up, cover up, here we go. And like I said, that, those pillows just got with away from them. They couldn't even hang on to them. Couldn't even hang on to their little pillows. So I just had to hold on to them and have them start saying a prayer, start singing anything to get them calmed down. And when you say hold on to them, you're talking about the residents here yes. in the nursing home. Can, can you just paint us a picture? They're all in wheelchairs or a straight back chair, uh, different things called a dynago chair and stuff. And all of them are there with a blanket and a pillow that's come from their room. So we've got the blanket over the top of their legs and things, the pillows over their heads and faces. And like I said, they just couldn't even hold on to their little pillows. It just really ripped it right away from them. So when that came up, we just had to get closest to the ones we could, cover them up with our bodies, and just, like I said, just pray and start singing. And talk to me really about the aftermath. I cannot imagine what you guys were going through. And then immediately you called for help to try to get these residents some help, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. First thing I did whenever everything stopped where I could call and talk, I called the owner and told him that we'd been hit. We were hit bad and we needed help and help starters. edition of the fifth estate catastrophic floods we are just next to the dirty river i'm so scared communities cut off lives on the line there was nothing we could do for the people that you knew were alive under the mud british columbia is a province that's bearing the brunt of a changing climate the last few days have been incredibly difficult for british columbians heavy rains strong winds flooding have devastated entire communities of our province. There was really you know where you could go. Our infrastructure is built for a planet that no longer exists. We design and build our infrastructure based on the climate of the past. Yet our investigation shows warnings have been ignored time and time again. I think it was preventable and it was predictable. 
making this a disaster just waiting to happen. What our response shows is that for governments, experience has become making the same mistake over and over again, but with greater confidence. And there's one question that keeps coming up. It's all gone. <laughs> Shouldn't we have seen this coming? Tonight, pounding unprecedented rainfall leads to historic B.C. flooding, a state of emergency, and parts of the West Coast cut off. On the island, floodwaters render Souk Road, the Malahat, and the Trans-Canada near Cowichan impassable. On the mainland, the entire town of Merritt is ordered out with water pouring into homes, and dozens of drivers are trapped in a mudslide waiting for rescue by air. Tonight, we have full coverage of the record rainfall and extensive damage. We have it. We're, we've got an appointment on... Uh... A long ways away, so we're going to be very late. The island community completely cut off until 2 p.m. as floodwaters overwhelmed vital connections in and out. I wasn't expecting this this part of the road to be flooded right here. It looks like it's uh, you know pretty uh, pretty rough. On the mainland, the situation gets worse. Widespread flooding and wastewater issues cause the total evacuation of merit. And landslides strand hundreds of motorists near Hope. Helicopters, their only lifeline. The situation is dynamic. Back on the island, the Cowichan Valley Regional District declares a state of emergency. Flooding dismantles the Trans-Canada Highway near Duncan. And officials tell residents in low-lying areas to be ready to evacuate. Greater Victoria was not spared. In North Saanich, a massive sinkhole closes Chalet Road. While heavy flooding in Saanich devastates homes. The one home for sure, there is serious damage going on there. As floodwaters fall, the somber realization comes into focus that the true damage from this storm may not be known for days. On the American side, a flood alarm telling residents to brace for high waters, move livestock to higher ground. Hi, this is... The alarm was heard by some on the Canadian side of the border, prompting this BC MLA to send out a warning of his own on Facebook. No system that hit Friday may be the deadliest in his state's history. Powerful storms tore through several states overnight, causing severe damage, untold fatalities, countless injuries, and power outages. Tornado watches were posted earlier in the day in a total of nine states, from Texas to the Great Lakes. Devastation has been reported between Arkansas and Michigan. President Biden has been briefed on the storms. He says he is working with governors to ensure that their states have what they need. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir says that the death toll is likely to rise dramatically. Uh, this will be, I believe, the deadliest tornado system to ever run through Kentucky. Now, earlier this morning at about 5 a.m., we were uh, pretty sure that we would have we would lose over 50 Kentuckians. I'm now certain that that number is north of 70. It may, in fact, end up exceeding 100. But everywhere along the line of this tornado that touched down and stayed down for 227 miles, over 200 in Kentucky, um, has been severely and significantly impacted. The storm leveled parts of several neighborhoods in western Kentucky. The city of Mayfield was hit especially hard. The mayor of Mayfield told us this afternoon some buildings look like a bomb went off. Rescue workers are combing through debris and trying to find any survivors. Joining us now from the town square in Mayfield, Kentucky, is Jason Lamb from our CBS News affiliate, WTVF. Jason, thank you for being there. We can see behind you so much of the devastation, and we know that Mayfield is among the very worst hit areas from these tornadoes. Tell us what you're seeing. Well, that's right, and it is not just the devastation behind me. The devastation really exists everywhere you look, no matter what direction that you face here in the town square in Mayfield. 
you don't just see one building damaged or two or three. You see all of them. It is really devastation that is just catastrophic to the level of something I have never seen before. I've covered a lot of tornado damage scenes over the past 13 years of doing this. This is by far and away just the most catastrophic and widespread uh, damage I've ever seen. And we're looking at this and seeing the, the damage that is hard to describe with areas just completely leveled. We heard that more than 100 people were inside a local candle-making factory when the tornado ripped through it. Um, I understand that about 40 people were pulled out. Do we have any more updates about any of the people who were inside and the condition of uh, the current search efforts? Well, that really is the most active scene in all of Mayfield. We were able to get close to that scene a couple hours ago, and we were able to see the backhoes at work that were trying to process what is really now just a pile of rubble on the ground, that candle-making factory. Um, but also at that scene were ambulances and fire trucks ready to go just in case they would be able to find someone in that rubble alive. And we were told by some witnesses there, some people that had been watching that scene for quite some time, that as recently as a couple of hours ago, they were able to find people alive amongst all that rubble so many hours later and get them the help and uh, the, uh, the uh, medical attention that they needed. But what was really bizarre to me when you are there on scene this of course was a candle making facility they where they did make candles and in this horrible scene of destruction every now and then you would get this unmistakable whiff of a floral candle scent and it just reminds you mm -hmm. of the work that was going on there at that time uh, when those tornadoes came through